Hey folks, welcome back to Complicated Things. Anybody remember these? Um, back in the darkroom days, we used to use these to do dodging and burning. And it was kind of a real fine art and it was a lot of fun. And what I'm gonna try and show you today is how I'm still kind of using these techniques digitally in Photoshop to give my photos a bit more of a darkroom feel instead of a very precise Photoshop feel. So I'm not gonna do any retouching today, but simply take a raw image, do some super quick color corrections, and then use dodge and burn to really try and make the image shine. So let me show you how I go about it. Folks, this is a shoot I did recently. This is a young man called Roman. He is a dancer, soloist with New York City Ballet. He's phenomenal to photograph, so I'm lucky in that respect. I'm just gonna take this from Capture One and open it with no settings at all in Camera Raw and Photoshop. Open in Camera Raw, I've got no settings whatsoever. The only settings that are being applied here are a profile which you need. Now, Adobe gives you a few to use. I'm gonna use Adobe Standard because that is gonna give me the least decisions made by software about how my image should look and more decisions made by my camera. So there it is. I'm gonna open it in Photoshop and start dodging and burning. Quick mask, the way I use it, is not the default on Photoshop. So I wanna show you how to set it up for what I'm about to do. On the bottom of your toolbar, there's a little uh, rectangular image with a circle. You wanna double click that. You wanna make sure that you're masking the selected areas and not the masked areas, because that would be inverse for us. And you can choose whatever color you want here and whatever opacity. I use green, because that's the most obvious on skin, and I use it at 50%. Okay, that's number one. Number two, you only want to be painting with a black brush, uh, a black brush or a white brush. So make sure, press D, and that will make sure that these uh, foreground, background colors are black and white. That's it. Without further ado, I've got my image. I'm going to press Q. Takes me into Quick Mask right there. I'm going to take my brush size and I'm gonna paint painterly and not particularly accurately what I wanna do. So the first thing that I wanna do is kind of darken this side of the face. So literally my opacity is at 20%, big soft brush, and I'm gonna paint a quick mask down like that. Okay, so that's my quick mask. If I press Q again, I come out of quick mask and that allows me to do what I want to do with that mask. I want to do a curve layer. I want to do a load of curve layers. So I'm just going to do a quick curve layer and in my curve, I'm just going to bring that down. And that you can see is darkening that area of his face. Now I'm at 20% opacity. You guys might want to use a different opacity. I like 20%. Okay. And I think super quickly, that is how that would feel in the dark room if I was burning down his face a little bit there. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is a vignette. I'm gonna make my image a little smaller and I'm gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna press Q, I'm gonna go into quick mask. I'm gonna use a nice big brush. I'm just gonna paint in this vignette at 20%. Now, while I'm here, I feel his hand is a little lighter than his face, which I don't like. So at the same time, I'm just gonna do that as well. Really roughly on his hand there. I have the vignette and I also have the mask covering a little bit of his hand. It's not particularly accurate because it's more about brush strokes and painting than, than it is about crazy accuracy, but there we go. Um, I'm gonna go around a little bit extra here and just build up a little bit. So uh, the inner vignette is softer or lighter than the outer vignette. There we go. Press my Q again, press the curves, and I'm just gonna bring these curves down. And you see that's bringing his hand down 
and the side down, giving everything a little more pop. Um, something else you can do if you want, um, I'm going to do a ton of curved layers, so I'm going to make a new group right here. I'm just going to prop, pop my curved layers into that group so I can turn off the group and see what's happening all together. So this is beginning to look a little better. I still feel I want this a little darker here, so I'm just going to do a new mask. Press Q. I'm going to take the small brush size, opacity at 20. Can I get to 20? There we go. A little bit bigger brush. I'm just going to do another stroke down here. Q. Curve. I'm just going to darken that a bit. And to me, it's beginning to feel a little more like a darkroom print than it, like, like highly photoshopped. Looking at this side of his face here, I still feel it's a little bit light. I'd like to darken down the edge there to give it more three-dimensional pop. So I'm going to press Q, take me into my quick mask, press B for my brush. I know my brush is soft. I can change the size. I'm going to make it a little smaller. And this time, I'm, I know I'm going to hit the edge here, but I just want to hit the edge of his face there. And I feel I have a little too much quick mask on the background there. How do you fix that? If you press the X key, it will shift you from foreground to background, and then change, it's going to take my opacity, and I'm going to take that up to 100%, and now I'm just going to get rid of that extra green that I don't really want to affect right now. Okay, I'm going to press Q, I'm going to press mask, and I'm just going to bring that side of his face down slightly. There we go. Okay, what else is happening here? Let's go super quick to eyes and teeth. Eyes. These are, everybody does eyes differently. I'm going to try and do them with a quick mask, how I normally do them. My brush size is a little smaller, still at 20% opacity. I'm just going to paint in my mask. My mask. Um, I'm not going crazy accurate here, but a little more accurate than just splashing it about. <laughs> there we go. One. And two. Um, a lot of people have two eyes, so you are going to have to do that on both sides of their face. It makes it better. Q, come out a quick mask. Curve, make a little curve. And I'm just going to pop this up a fraction. Really, really. I mean, you can go, but you don't want to do that. You just want to go a little tiny bit. Um, if I make this full screen and turn uh, on and off, you can see I've just popped these whites a little bit. I would say too much. I'll put it back a little bit on that curve. And what's nice about this is you can always go back. So, you know, you can look at this curve and go, eh, I want that a little more. So you can go back to that curve and you can work on it a little bit depending on, 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 on where you are in your image. All right, back to eyes. Um, I'm going to zoom in. And this is something that I like to do on eyes. Um, I'm going to go into quick mask, brush, 20% opacity, same, same thing. And I'm just going to hit a couple of these areas around, uh, is that the iris? The iris with a quick mask. Um, just a little bit. I'm going to do the same here, and here, and here. Um, go out a quick mask, make a curve, and then I'm going to pop that curve. And you can just go until you feel it's about right, or until it looks like. And look, look how much that's popped these eyes there. Um, be careful, you don't want to overdo it, but you want to get a little bit of a pop. All right, so I'm pretty good place here. Um, I'm looking at this image, and I can turn it off and on and see where we're at. And we're in a pretty good place. One thing I haven't done is I haven't done the hair. I haven't accentuated the hair. Um, and I think there's a lot of detail we can pull out there. This is where I get my Rembrandt on. And I'm actually going to do a little bit of painting. Go into my quick mask. 20%. Uh, 
brush size. I'm just going to kind of paint sort of some strokes here. Don't they look terrible? Um, but I'm just trying to go into some of these highlights and follow a little bit the line of where the hair should be kind of thing. Really not so much in the highlights, mostly on the shadows. Um, and you guys can work on this. You can change your brush scale, size, whatever you want to do. Um, and you build up this little quick mask like that. Come out quick mask, go to the curve and pop your curve up a bit. Now if I go like high here, you can see this ridiculousness, but if I just go to around about here-ish, there we go. So once again, you can totally see how we've managed to highlight a few details in the hair and give the image some more punch and more feel. So I'm looking at my image and I'm liking what I've done. I'm gonna turn my group on and off so we can see everything. Things are beginning to pop and happen. I'm digging it. One thing which is glaring to me is this forehead looks a little bit bright. Now, if I'd been uh, Albert Watson when I was shooting, I would have put a flag up there and caught off that. I didn't, but in the dark room or in Photoshop, we can do something similar. Once again, uh, key, uh, Q, B, 20% opacity. Listen, play around with that. You might find 30% opacity works for you, 4%, play around with it. It's just a good starting point for me. Um, I'm gonna change my brush size. I'm gonna do a nice big brush here. I'm just gonna hit that forehead just once. There we go. Ooh, I'm gonna take off the eyebrows, cause, ah, fuck it, I'll leave it. Okay, Q, curve. Um, I just know that my producer's going, you're gonna have to cut that, cause I said fuck. We'll see what happens. All right, uh, bring it down a bit. All right, we're getting pretty good here. This is looking really nice. Um, so now if we start going into minutia and we start playing around like this highlight I love here, I'd like to, to make that highlight a little more highlighty. So Q, um, brush 20%, I'm just gonna hit that. I'm just gonna come down into there. Q again. Curve, I'm gonna pop that a little more. So that's just accentuating that highlight there. Um, what else? Um, the shirt. I feel the shirt is a little light. I'd like to bring it down, do the same thing. Go into Q, uh, quick mask, get a nice big brush. Just hit it at 20%. Wherever you want to hit it. There you go. Uh, Q, curve. Just bring that curve down. I can just darken that shirt a little bit. Start getting things to pop. So I'm really beginning to like the look of this. I think if I turn everything on and off, we can really see how just by dodging and burning, we've really shaped that image. And I think it's looking good. Um, at this point, we could do some overall curve layers. Um, if I just wanted to get a little more contrast throughout the thing, I'm just going to do a curve layer with no mask. I'm going to add a little S curve to it. Uh, it's the shape of an S. And then looking at it once again with a curve, add saturation. So I'm going to do one other kind of adjustment layer, which is a hue and saturation layer. And I'm just going to take the saturation down a tiny little bit. Once again, just using curves and masks, I think we've got something really pretty here and it really stands out. Folks, that's pretty much how I use Dodge and Burn and I love it. It really makes me feel creative. It gives me a little kick of being a painter and being painterly and I love working like that. Now that has had no pixel retouching on it. We, I have a full uh, retouching tutorial that you can check back on complicated things for, but that was just pretty much dodge and burn. Think it looks great. One other thing, black and white conversion. Um, people go crazy about their black and white conversions. 
There's some great software out there. If you don't want to spend more money on software, give yourself a chance and just try in the adjustment layers, black and white. Okay, it's going to take you to a pretty nice place here. You have some presets. Um, you can try through them, high contrast, ooh. Um, green filter is going to soften stuff up. You can go through these um, and see if there's any defaults that you like. What I tend to do is just mess with my reds a little bit. Just pop my reds, which are the skin tones, and the yellows, which are my skin tones and pretty much work within that area. And that's beginning to look like one of my pictures. So all with dodge and burn. Thanks guys, I hope you learned something. Um, I love dodging and burning. It takes me back to that feeling in the dark room of really pushing and negative and trying to get something out of it. I mean, this is before I had the ability to do retouching. All we had was dodging and burning. So I still love to play with that. If you want to see more about my actual pixel retouching, there's a whole video on complicated things. If you're still awake, do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe, because that way I can make more videos that hopefully you'll still be awake to at the end. Hope you're well. See you all soon. Bye.